Hi everyone, this is Teal from ParkerBlocks.com. Welcome to another art product review. Today I'm going to show you these six brushes. This is actually sent to me by this company called Rigor Art. So I'm going to paint with them and tell you how it feels like to paint with this set of brushes. I have already taken the brushes out from the packaging. Right behind the packaging, there are some instructions on how you can prepare the brushes when they are brand new. When they are new, there is some protective coating over the brush to make this hard to protect it while it's inside the packaging so that the hair doesn't move around or doesn't get bent. So you need to basically put the brushes into some warm water, wash them for a while to dissolve that so that they will become soft. I've already done that. Also included in this set is this zip pouch. It's almost A4 size. You can use this to transport your brushes, but personally I prefer to use a brush wrap, which I'm going to show you later on. Also included are some additional instructions on how to take care of your brushes. This is actually quite useful. I will post this on my website so you can check out some of the tips on brush care and these are additional tips on how you can take care of your brushes these are very useful for beginners these are short handle brushes they are marketed for use with watercolor acrylic and oil i only use watercolor so my demo later on will be with watercolor the design is very simple just a branding here and the size of the brush this is a size 2 fan brush this is a size 8 filbert this is an angled brush, size 6. This is size 7 flat brush. And this is a small number 2 round brush. And this is a number 0 round brush. What's missing and something that I wish was included would be a big round brush. This angular brush and this flat brush to me they are very similar. The brushes are made with synthetic hair. I'm not sure what's the material, but it's actually quite soft. This particular brush has been stained with some staining watercolor and this is impossible to wash off, but that's not really an issue. All right, let's very quickly get into the demonstration to show you how the brushes perform. This is a sketch of a bookseller in his bookstore. So there are a lot of books stacked horizontally as well as vertically. So maybe the flat brush, they will come in handy later on. Let me start by coloring the cellar. I'm going to use yellow ochre and a warm red to do that. Just very quickly color this. All right, since I do not have a round brush, I have to use this filbert brush. Because the shape of the brush is like this, it's a bit difficult to get into tiny areas. So let me just color this very quickly. This is basically the shape of this filbert brush. So it has this round edge to it. And now I'm going to use this flat brush to color the jacket of this seller. The synthetic hat doesn't hold a lot of water, so I have to reload it quite often. It's quite soft and nice to work with. So a round brush would be more suitable here for these areas. But you can do that with a flat brush, you just need to be a bit more careful. So getting into tiny areas is definitely not easy. Let me switch to the angular brush now. So this is already stained with color. That is halo blue. Same thing, I'm just going to just wash, give a wash to the hair. And now I'm going to use this size 2 round brush to color the bookshelves, which are red in color. This brush does not hold a lot of water, so I have to reload it constantly. This is the texture you can get, some dry brush texture. This can be quite nice, but in this case, I actually wanted a solid line like this. 
So the synthetic hair it doesn't hold a lot of paint, so I have to constantly reload this. Let's move on to coloring the books. I'm going to use this fan brush. I'm going to wet this and try and make some yellow wash. You can actually use this fan brush as a large wash brush when it's loaded with water. When the fan brush is a bit dry, you can get lines like this. So to get this, you have to make sure that the brush is quite dry. Let's move on to using the flat brush. So I'm going to color the books now. So the books are stacked horizontally as well as vertically. So let me just try and use this flat brush to do that. Some of the books are a bit thicker. So I can use this to color those. This is quite helpful. For painting rectangles, it's very easy to use the flat brush, but for painting smaller areas, it's quite challenging. I'm going to switch to an angled brush. Oh, by the way, there is this bookshelf that's here. I forgot to color that, so I want to, I want to color this now. So this angular brush that I'm using right now, it's very similar to the flat brush. I would have preferred a round brush instead of an angular. I'm using the size 0 round brush now. I'm using the size 0 round brush now. So I want to draw the spectacles to give this area a bit more contrast. And now I'm going to paint the dark areas of the bookshelves with this size 2 round brush. This brush is not very sharp, so I have to be a bit careful if I want to have, if I want to paint really, uh, paint into the detailed areas. This does not hold a lot of water as well, so I have to constantly reload this. So this is the completed sketch painted with these six brushes. These brushes perform quite well. Let's go through the pros and cons. The main characteristics of synthetic brushes is they do not hold as much water compared to natural hair brushes. So oftentimes I have to reload these brushes quite often. That's something to take note of, especially when you are painting large areas of washes. You probably might want to get a larger brush or maybe a natural hair brush or a sable brush. So these brushes, I think they are more suitable for painting smaller paintings or for use in sketchbooks where the sketches are a bit smaller. These two brushes are good for details, but they are very short so they run out of paint quite quickly. This size 0 brush is much sharper compared to this size 2 brush. So to get into really tiny spaces, this size 0 is more appropriate. These two brushes, the flat and the angular, they do not perform very differently, so they are quite similar to me. Quite useful for painting rectangles and large shapes. This filbert brush is also quite suitable for painting large shapes. If you need sharper edges, then the flat and angular brush would be more appropriate. If not, then the filbert. If you find a flat brush to be too small for painting large areas, you can also use the fan brush, just make sure that this is fully loaded and you can paint really large areas. If it's a bit more dry, then you are going to get textures like this. Overall, these are decent brushes. The build quality is good. The hair is soft. They can go back to shape quite easily. They are very affordable. So in my opinion, they are worth the money. You can check out the price on Amazon. And one last thing I want to show you is this brush wrap that is also made by Rieger Art. 
so there are two levels with a lot of slots you can put your brushes like this this is made of some canvas so it goes in like this and you can just wrap it up so this should provide good protection for the brushes so that's all for today's review i hope you find this helpful if you have any questions feel free to ask me in the comment section just right below thanks for watching see you in the next video bye